Okay, gang. So, I was asked to do a video of Michaela's portfolio um, to give you guys an idea of how I made the choices I made, um, especially for pictures and the layout. Uh, Michaela won Best of the Best Portfolio at Nationals, um, so I was asked to do this for you guys so that you know what to look for with your portfolio for Nationals. Um, to start, one of the things that I did was I needed to decide what to put my portfolio in, or her portfolio in. Uh, so one of the things that I chose was a black art portfolio. It has a little sleeve here. It is plastic and it has plastic sleeves. It, it can be found at Michael's, any craft store, um, down in the painting and canvas area. So if you can find the canvases, you'll find one of these. And it does hold up to eight by 10. I think it can actually hold, no, maybe not. It only holds up to an eight by 10. Some people use Shutterfly or MPEX or places like that online. Um, that is quite all right too, as long as you're happy with it. I like to use this portfolio because I can easily add pictures to it. I can take pictures out if there's a picture all of a sudden that I decide I don't want at the last minute before I turn it in. I can pull it out and rearrange the portfolio. Plus, I can reuse it for a following year. Um, so, the first thing you need to do uh, that for nationals is make sure your first page of your portfolio has the first and last name and the division as your title page. Now I chose purple as my font and I made sure it was a font that was readable and very uh, natural. They will uh, at nationals put a little sticker I don't know if we'll do it this year, but they did last year, and it has her first initial, last name, title, and her or contestant number. But my first page is to start with a title page, which is kind of like any report or thing like that that you do. You need a title page. So when choosing pictures, when we get into choosing pictures, and I'll go ahead and flip. When choosing pictures, I try to choose an equal amount of color shots black and white shots, um, portraits, and if I have any landscapes, I try to make the landscapes an odd number instead of an equal number. I try to have uh, an equal balance of headshots as well as full body or half body shots as well. So. The first picture that I decided to put in Michaela's picture or portfolio was her, her headshots. If you're going on a modeling job or things like that, the one thing that they always ask for is a headshot. So I figured her headshot would be the first thing that they really want to see. And it kind of bring, gives them an idea of who she is uh, to start off with. Uh, with her headshots, the way I narrowed it down, she has several. The way I narrowed it down is I looked at her eyes and how bright they show and how open they are, uh, what they're, the story that they're telling me, as well as her smile and how poised she is. And if she's having fun, is her smile natural? Is it a fake smile? She had, tends to have a fake smile every now and then. So that's what I chose. Um, and I started this portfolio with color. So the next page is some full body shots. So I went from headshots first to full body. These are fun pictures of hers. So they kind of show her playful side and gives the judges, I figured gives the judges a little bit of who she is, what kind of personality she has. Um, this is a playful one of her in the air. She is centered. That's another thing you want to look for is where is she centered? Is she centered in the shot? Uh, with headshots, if you go back, you want to look at where her head and body lie as well. 
So in this one, she's centered in the picture. She's got a little bit of teeth and her playful looking self. In this one, she has her sassy self uh, with a little bit of attitude, but still playful and it's full body shot. The same with this one, this is a half body shot and, and she's centered in it. She's got her teeth showing. This is a little bit of her fake smile, but kind of natural. So I went ahead with it. <clears throat> and this one here is just her chilling out. And it's sort of like a half body shot as well, even though you see her legs and everything, but it still holds easy on the eyes when you're flipping the pages. So I went ahead and threw that one there. This one, these here, they're kind of matching shots. So this one is kind of like a zoom in of this one, uh, which is why I ended up putting these where they are and putting them together as well. Uh, these again are full body shots, a little bit of her playful self in this one and just a regular uh, full body natural shot there. So now I get, now when I'm through my colors, my color portraits, I'm into my black and whites. It gives a easier, you hear my cat, it, it gives an easier approach on the eyes when looking through the video, which is what, you know, I went, wanted to go for. So I start off with the headshots, just like I did with the colors. I started off with the headshots in black and white. And I double check again her teeth, making sure she's got a great smile, her eyes are great, um, and where she lies in the, por in the portrait. Then I get into my full bodies again. These shots are very similar. She's leaning against the wall, but they're easy on the eyes to look at. Black and white is my favorite out of color. Um, personally because black and white shows a lot of the uh, details that you don't see that you don't see as much in color so now I'm going into my landscape which means I'm coming to the end of my book um, once you flip this page you're gonna have to turn the page so this is why I say to have you'll see why I say to have an odd number of landscapes compared to the equal number of the black of the portraits. So I have two landscape photos here of her. They're both on the where she's lying on the ground in some way or sitting on the ground, which makes it easy. She's in centered in each picture. So when I do turn it, you know, if I turn it this way, it's easy to look at. Now I can just flip up to the next one. And this is the last one. It's a full body shot. It's a fun picture of her. She and you know she had a lot of fun with it, and it's a yeah it puts her a little smaller and out, but she's got a little bit of sass with it too. Um, another thing that I did and why I keep an odd number of landscapes is uh, so that I have this blank page at the end. That way it tells the eyes that okay this is the last picture and I'm done and I don't need to flip any more pages. I can just close the book. Um, so that's pretty much my reasoning for why I did her portfolio. Uh, when I did do her portfolio, picking out the pictures was the hardest thing. Um, I ended up laying them all out on, on my bed so that I could look at them all. And just one by one went through and uh, came up with reasons why not, why, or why or why not to choose the photos I chose. Then once I narrowed them all down, I think I had 50 total. Once I narrowed them all down, then I started figuring out where I wanted them in the book. <clears throat> so, and I'm gonna put a plug in to, if you're looking for a great photographer, Gina Kramer's really good. She knows the pure system. She knows what they're looking for in photos. And she's a really easy photographer to work with. So, if you have any questions, feel free to, to post them. Um, if you're unsure why I did some of the things I did, feel free to ask. Uh, any one of us can answer. But I hope this gives you an idea of uh, how to put a portfolio together and some ideas of what to look for.